Hi, I'm Sven from Beam Music. In the last video we created a modern style user interface for our simple synth. Today we're gonna make a vintage style user interface based on images. And we add a piano roll and make the user interface resizable. Copying again. Starting point is my SPP synth from our last video. Download it from the LB2 tutorial GitHub repository if you haven't got it yet. Make a copy and rename it to my SPP synth vintage. Rename all files and inside the files the URIs and the file names, as we did it all the time. Get the submodules and build them. For the first we can keep the manifest, the plugin definition and the plugin DSP code. And only take hands on the user interface. How should it look like? It should look like a vintage style hardware synth. So we will need a background with wood or metal or both. And we need vintage style dials and sliders. This can be realized by vWidget's image styles and image sliders. The waveform can be displayed on the top of a monitor image, which can put to the background. This is more or less the same as in the modern style in my SPP synth. New will be the piano roll on the bottom and a velocity slider. Let's start with the background. The modern style UI has got a size of 600 times 200. I want it bigger. Let's take the double size, 1200 times 400 plus 200 pixels height for the piano roll and the velocity slider. Take some wood for the background. I like to use pxir.com as a resource, if you won't go to the next forest. A brushed metal plate on the top. Cut it to the required size. Make it a bit shiny. And screws! Screws are very important. Because of... Because they can do... Anyway, we need screws. And by chance I've got a few laying around. Add them. And a vintage style monitor image. Labels for the synth. Level. Attack decay sustain release. And velocity. That's enough for me. Feel free to let your creative juices flow. Now to the programming. In the UI header file we will replace value age sliders by image age sliders and adapt the include. The value dial by image dial and adapt the include. We add a bewidget's h piano roll piano and include h piano roll. And a bewidget's image v slider velocity and include it too. Inside the UI CPP file in the constructor, we scale everything times 2. Attack, decay, sustain and release are not anymore value h sliders, but now image h sliders with different parameters. Image sliders consist of three images. The first is a static content, like the background, or labels. This is always displayed. The second one is the active content, like a scale. This is displayed clip depending on the slider value. And the third one is the dynamic content. This can be a knob which you can drag. The position of the third image depends on the slider value. In addition we have to define anchor points for the images. From and to for the static image and the center points for the active and the dynamic image. Enough theory, we need images. We can take them from the B widgets examples. Copy and paste the ping files from image style, image H slider and image V slider. Now we need the path and the anchor points. We can take them from the widget gallery example from pre widgets. Use bundle path instead and do the same with decay, sustain and release. Same procedure with level and image style. Piano is initialized with its coordinates on the bottom middle of the UI and the image V slider velocity next to it on its right side. Add the three images for value age sliders as in widget gallery and the default velocity, the min velocity, the max velocity and step 1 as it is an integer. Inside the constructor body we don't need set foreground colors anymore, as we use images for everything. Then we add the two new widgets, Piano and Velocity. Enough to give it a first test. Compile and link everything as in the last videos. Create a new directory inside your LB2 folder. Copy all shared object binaries, the TTL files and the ping images. And test. Yes, it already looks more or less as it should. The piano keys are grayed out, as on default all piano keys are inactive. But they aren't connected to the plugin anyway. So let's first deactivate the piano keys by... Activate! 
And we can already set the default MIDI velocity for key pressing by set velocity and the value we used for the initialization of the velocity slider. Later we will synchronize the velocity slider value and the piano MIDI velocity. Then we will connect the piano roll to the plugin DSP in a callback function. This will be the more tricky part. There are multiple ways to do this. One possible way is to send MIDI atoms via the event transfer to the plugin DSP. Take a look at the URIs, URIDs and atoms video. We can keep it as simple as possible, as we only have to send 3 byte MIDI messages. So we can use LV2 atom int for it, which takes up 4 byte integers, but leaves the 4th byte empty. Then we analyze this LV2 atom int in the plugin DSP run method, as we did it with the MIDI events. But for this we need identifiers for the atoms and events. We have to map them to URIs, yeah it's LV2, and get the map tool from the host provided features. But step by step. First go to the UI HPP file. Here we need callback functions for the piano and for the velocity. Then in the UI CPP file, in the constructor, link the piano to the piano changed callback and the velocity to velocity changed callback. And it's a good idea to store the velocities for all keys in an array. And initialize this array with a default value of 64. Then to Piano Changed Callback. We get the H Piano Roll from Dynamic Casted Event Get Widget and the UI from Get Main Window as for the value Changed Callback. If UI exists, then we look which key is changed, pressed or released. So we have to iterate through the piano keys by the index, from 0 to 127. Get the velocity v of the respective key by get key and the index. And if v differs from the corresponding value in our velocities array, then we create a 3 bytes MIDI message and store it in a 4 bytes unsigned int. For the first byte, we check if v is 0. In this case, we take lv2 MIDI note off, otherwise lv2 MIDI note on. Then we add the note index times 100 hex for the second byte. And finally the velocity times 10,000 hex for the third byte. Next we declare an lv2 atom int atom. Set the atom type URID later. And its content size 4 bytes. Set the content and send it via the write function to port MIDI in using the lv2 port protocol for atom event transfer. This is an important difference to the use of the write function in value changed callback, where we use 0 for the transfer to control ports. And finally we have to update our velocities array with V. A lot of red lines, cause some things are missing. Now we need the URIDs for the atom type and the atom event transfer. And we get the URIDs exactly by the same way as the URID for MIDI event in the plugin DSP part. There was a struct called URIDs which contains the URID for MIDI MIDI event. But to get the URID for MIDI MIDI event, we need to call the map function, which is provided as a feature. Therefore we have to check the past features for map. Now it makes sense to move the URIDs to the separate HPP file as it will get more. Add the type URID for our atom, let's call it UI MIDI event, and the URID for atom event transfer. And add an init method for mapping URIs to the URIDs by an LV2 URID map feature pointer. Inside this init method we call the map feature provided map function for the respective URI for MIDI MIDI event as before in the plugin DSP constructor. Then we do the same with UI MIDI event. Now we need an URI. Let's take the plugin URI plus UI MIDI event. And also the same for atom event transfer. Now we can go back to the plugin DSP for some cleanup redundancies. Include URIDs, remove the redundant struct, and call URIDs init instead of map functions for each member. In the UIHPP file we include URIDs too. Declare map and URIDs as in the DSP part, and copy and paste the LB2 features query for map and URIDs init to the UICPP file. Still have to initialize map with null pointer. Again red lines as features is still unknown. We passed it from instantA to the constructor in the plugin DSP, but not in the UI. So let's do it. Go to instantiate, pass the features to my SPP synth UI constructor, copy features from the instantiate header to the constructor header in the UI HPP file and in the CPP file. 
And of course we need util for lv2 features query as in the DSP. Fixed. Note, we scan for features in both, in UI instantiate for parent and in the my SPP and UI constructor for map. This is a bit stupid. I will provide a version in the LB2 tutorial GitHub repository where we scan for both features in Instantiate and pass map to the my SPP synth UI constructor too. Back to the remaining red line. It's the URID for our atom type which we left empty. Now we've got UI, URIDs, UI MIDI event. Now we are ready to send keyboard notes, but we still need to receive them in the plugin DSP run method. This is easy, as we use the same data format as MIDI. We only take along the condition. Or if error body dot type is your IDs dot UI MIDI event. So we handle both host provided MIDI events and UI provided MIDI events in the same way. Much work for a piano roll. Now to our velocity slider and velocity changed callback. Copy the header and the class name. Inside we need access to the image v slider velocity v by dynamic cast from event get widget. We get the my spp synth ui pointer by dynamic cast from v get main window. And if ui exists then we set the piano velocity by set velocity and get value from v pointing to the velocity slider. Compile, link, copy and test. It works. Now to the UI resize. If the user resizes in an UI, then the windowing system sends the configure request event. And this is internally handled in the onConfigure request. So in the UI HPP file, we have to overwrite the existing virtual method onConfigure request, which takes a B widgets event as parameter, like all on event methods, and implement it in the UI CPP file. First, we call the parent on configure request. Then, we define a scaling factor for a set. But what is a set? For this, we need data from the event. From an expose event, EE. Dynamic cast event? We have to include it. If it fails, then return. H is the EE area height and W is the EE area width. If W divided by its standard value 1200 is less than H divided by its standard value 600, then take W by 1200, otherwise H by 600. And set zoom as set. And in the constructor, in the window initialization, we have to enable resize. Again compile, link, copy and run. Now you can resize the window too. And that's it.